y'all it is tuesday afternoon it is the start of a brand new weekly vlog i didn't film anything yesterday um one because it was so busy we had a scrimmage game um in the afternoon during school and that was just crazy busy and hot so hot um but then i had to leave early because exciting news I closed on my construction loan so one step closer to building the house I don't even remember if I said anything about this in last week's vlog um, everything is starting to run together at this point but the contractor called and he is hoping to start digging the foundation this weekend um, and he said if not this weekend then definitely next week um, so I'm so excited about that so grateful that I am at this part finally long time coming oh my goodness so such a very stressful process I mean it is exciting but my goodness the stress I am currently sitting in my office that doesn't even look like my office anymore um, and I am not gonna let you guys see all of this mess because oh my goodness y'all it is a disaster um, I'm trying to slowly, which I've been talking about this and I've been sharing this whole process this summer, but I'm trying to pack up everything and get it um, squared away because I want to get this house. I'm sorry, I'm shaking the tripod. Um, I want to get this house completely emptied because I think it would sell better if it didn't have all of my stuff and all of my clutter in it. So I'm going to, um, I've been packing up everything and I'm going to store it um, in, well, I'm going to live, I think I've talked about this, again, sorry, I don't even know, but I'm going to live um, with my mom while the house is being built, so I'm going to move in with her, we're going to start moving in this coming weekend, but I won't start staying up there until the next weekend, Labor Day weekend, I think that'll be a better time for me to get um, kind of settled in when I have three days, so um I'm gonna try and get everything started to be packed up and moved up there. My, I'm gonna move some stuff up in her like little storage area that she has and then my grandparents, they have um, a workshop and they cleared me out of splay, space um, to put all my stuff. So I just gotta get it packed away. So currently I'm sitting, like I said, in my office. I'm looking, I know you guys wonder what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the bookshelves because I've had to take all of the bookshelves like all of the stuff on the bookshelves I've had to take it off the bookshelves and pack it away and I've got to figure out how to get the bookshelf I didn't put the bookshelves um, on the wall the previous owners did and I painted two summers ago and I just painted around the bookshelves so I've got to figure out how to get the bookshelves off the wall so that I can paint around them and I also have to redo the floors um, so I have to get the bookshelves off so that um, they can put hardwood down around the bookshelves so um that's currently my life um i'm stressing myself at, out as i'm talking about it i'm sure you guys are probably stressed too i will show you i think i can show you without again showing you all of the mess but um these are the books that i'm going to donate that i've already read um you guys always ask what i do with books after i finish reading them if they're books that i just absolutely love i keep them and just put them on my bookshelf or if they're books by authors that I love, I'll keep them on my bookshelves. Of course, books that I haven't read yet, <laughs> I keep those. But the ones that I read and I just didn't fall in love with, I donate those. Or books that I've had on my uh, to-be-read shelf for a really long time. And I know I'm not going to read those. Like My reading tastes have changed. I'll then donate those too. So um, I either give these to my local library or I bring them up to the school that I work at and share them with my coworkers. So this big pile here is stuff that needs to be donated. And then I have a little pile up here started. These are young adult books that um, I... I, can get to, I don't even know where that's at in the viewfinder. Um, these are books that are young adult. I donate them to a friend that teaches high school um, English at my school. So I have her a stack started and then I'm sure I'm going to find some more along the way. So that's currently what I'm doing. Again, I'm not going to show you guys this awful messy room um, because I don't want you guys to see the mess and it just stresses me out looking at it. So I'm going to just get out of the room and close close the door and just you know and just pretend it's no longer here that'll work right until I'm forced to deal with it 
Um, so, like I said, that's what I'm doing today. I'm hoping to um, work a little bit and pack up some uh, like dishes and stuff and you know just little bitty projects like that. Um, I did want to show you guys some books that I've gotten recently. I went to Barnes & Noble this past weekend and got some stuff at the classroom library. I also have um, a book outlet order that I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to do a little bit of stuff around the house and then hopefully I'll sit down and um, film a little book unboxing for y'all. So I went to Barnes & Noble. I have a toy football in my hand because mom's little dog is here. So are going to hear her in the background. But I went to Barnes & Noble Sunday and I got several new books. Um, not a whole lot of picture books, but I got several new books for the classroom library. Now that I have got the kids in and I kind of understand a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit about their reading styles and what they like to read and what they don't like to read, I um, just went crazy at Barnes & Noble. So I thought I would share with y'all. I also have another... Um, book outlet order this one came we hadn't gone back to school yet I think it was about three weeks ago and I have I opened it that day but um, I knew I wanted to show y'all and I just keep forgetting it so I do need to get this out of the way so I'm going to show you what I um, got from book outlet I got a lot more books than I did last time but I wasn't as happy with them as I was last time so I'll um, show you what I got and um, let you guys see because book outlet is a great way to um, get books for your classroom cheap they're discounted books uh, these were very heavily discounted Th these which I'll show you in a minute but um, I don't know it's a great way to um, get books for your classroom in an inexpensive way so I'll show you that and I'll show you the Barnes & Noble bag that I'm really super excited about so let's get started with that okay so let's start with the Barnes & Noble books that I got the first one that I got was um, stick cat a tale of two kitties I have stick dog I don't know if this is well it says number one so I guess Stick Cat is a series and then Stick Dog is a series. I don't know. I only have one of Stick Dog. But um, the kids seem to be really excited about it. So I got this one. I had never seen this. I did not know it existed. Then I got one of the Dragon Breath books. Two years ago, my class really loved Dragon Breath. It's a mixture. It's not all graphic novel. It's a mixture of graphic novel type and, um, you know, regular text. Um, so I got that and then as I was at the checkout, I went by the bargain books and they had another one for, um, or on bargain for $5.98. This one was $7.99, so not a huge deal, but still. Um, so I got another one. This one's the Frozen Menace and this one is just the first one of the series. So I got those two. Then this is the one that I posted on um, Instagram. I know the girls are going to love this and boys too. This one is Phoebe and her unicorn. So pretty. The kids are obsessed with unicorns. I know they're going to like this one. Then if you follow me on Instagram, you guys know that I love Ben Clanton. He wrote Rot. We read a story today called It Came in the Mail. He wrote that one. Oh my goodness, I just love this author. He wrote a series, or he has written a series, Narwhal. Um, Stephanie from Teaching in Room 6 posted about this. I had seen it before, but I forgot about it until she posted about it. So I picked up the first one in this series. I think this one is going to be a um, very popular series. Now, it's way below fifth grade level. I don't care about reading level if they're just enjoying the book. Um, so... I thought that this one would be one that would get them excited and motivate the reluctant readers. So I'm excited to um, add this one into the collection. And then there were these really neat little things. So I got one to give away to you guys. Um, they were free, which I asked the girl if I could take one um, and give it away. And she said that was fine. But um, how cute are these things? Now one is a giveaway, but I'm going to put it down and just talk about this one. It um, It's collectible cards but they're by that graphics um, division of Scholastic. So there are these cards and like on the back, it just gives you information, but I thought these would be so useful in the classroom. You could display them or maybe even frame them. There's the babysitter club that was Amulet. Um, if y'all don't use Amulet in your classroom, if you don't have Amulet, my kids were obsessed with Amulet last year. Um, bird and squirrel, I've never seen that. Y'all have to let me know if y'all have seen that because I, 
apparently there are three books. I've never heard of those. Um, then Bone, last year's group, every group I think I have ever had has been obsessed with Bone. They love Bone. Um, Cleopatra in Space, that was another one I had never seen before. I'm gonna have to look into that one. Dogman, oh my goodness, we are counting down to the newest Dogman book. We are gonna be so excited when that one comes out. We are Dogman obsessed. Um, Mr. Wolf's Class, I've ordered some of this. I've never had uh, any of these books before. They're new, but I ordered some today from Scholastic. Um, Smile, a classic. And then Space Dumplings. I hadn't heard of that one before. That's a new one for me. Um, Sparks, I've never heard of that one either. Oh my goodness, I don't know any of these. I thought I was knowledgeable on graphic novels. Sunny Side Up, another classic. We love this one year after year. Um, Wings of Fire, I've heard of this one. I think I have maybe one. It's not very popular in my class or it hasn't been in the past. It might be though. Um, and that's it. So, I mean, even if you didn't display them in your classroom, you could just offer them as rewards. I thought that was so neat. I found these at Barnes and Noble. Like I said, they were free. So I got one for my classroom and then I picked up one for you guys too. So if you want to win this, leave me a comment below. Tell me your favorite book. And I know it's going to be hard, but tell me your favorite book to use in the classroom or your favorite book in your classroom library or one of your kids' favorite books in the classroom library um, to enter to win this little thing. And then I'll announce the winner before my next vlog. We'll do it that way. And then the last book that I picked up was a picture book. I did one picture book, y'all. Y'all be proud of me. This one was Finding Winnie. This is a nonfiction account of the um, creator of Winnie the Pooh, I wanna say. It says the true story of the world's most famous bear. But um, for some reason I'm thinking, oh, here's a remarkable true story of a bear who inspired Winnie the Pooh. I have seen this before, but I gotta admit, it didn't, I didn't, I wasn't pulled in until, and I do not remember because I just remembered scrolling past it last uh, week, but I didn't bookmark it or anything on Instagram, but somebody said that they read this last week with all of their um, classroom book a day books, and when they voted, this was the winner. So I thought, well, if it won out of all of the books that they read last week, you know, maybe my kids would like this one too. So I did pick it up because y'all know I'm always trying to find nonfiction. So um, this one might be one that my kids just love. And it'll be interesting to discover how Winnie the Pooh was created or what inspired Winnie the Pooh. So I'm excited about that one as well. Now let's move on to the book outlet order. I, if I'm not mistaken, they did send an invoice this time. If you watched the other vlog, where I ordered, they forgot the invoice and I had to count it up myself. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight books. Um, there's two copies of one. I don't remember if I did that accidentally or if they packaged it wrong. I don't remember. I apparently did not read the description well this time because a couple, one was not what I was thinking it was at all. And the other one was a board book and I didn't realize what that meant until I got it. So let me show you what um, my, book, my book outlet order was this time. I got eight books, $25. I mean, it's a really good deal and I'm still excited about them. I just didn't know it was gonna be like this on some of them. So let's talk about the books that I got from book outlet. First one that I got, I'm excited about this one. It is Cricket, or I'm sorry, Old Cricket. This one is, um, I think it's a tall, I think it's a take on the grass and the the Grasshopper and the Ant and Aesop Fable, so I thought it would be good to use when we discuss uh, the genre of Fable. Um, so I got it. I'm excited about it. I've never seen it, and it was a good, um, like, sturdy copy. It was a dollar sixty-four. So that's that is a really good deal. A dollar sixty-four. I am extremely happy with it. Um, the other one that I got that I know the kids are going to love. Um, everyone loves bacon. This one, love this. This was a damaged book. The barcode has been damaged. I don't know if y'all can see. Um, it's got some tears up at the top, which is, I mean, absolutely fine because it's still readable. And if you take the dust jacket off, brand new, problem solved. Um, this one, 
I mean, what is it about bacon? The kids are just obsessed with, <laughs> but the illustrations are really cute too. Um, I don't really know what it's going to be good for, but I knew the kids were going to love it. And I thought it would be a really good, funny one. Um, this, I think, is this the author of Gaston and Antoinette? Ooh, I think it is. And I loved those two books. So I'm excited about this one. It was $4.79. So $4.79 for a hardback book. That's pretty good. Um, this one, another one I'm super pleased with. Salt in His Shoes, Michael Jordan in Pursuit of a Dream. Another great nonfiction to add to the collection. And it's not overly lengthy. I mean, it would probably be a two-day read aloud if I used it as a read aloud. But, um, well, let me show you a page. But um, I think the kids especially would be interested in this one. So I'm really excited about that one, too. It was $2.39. I couldn't see anything that was wrong with it though. Um, I mean, it's got a little bit of wear there, but oh goodness, not hardly anything at all. So that one was really good too. This one, I did not know what it was. I thought it was a picture book. Um, it's not. Um, Ollie's Odyssey. <laughs> this one is extremely thick. Did not realize what that was, which I mean, some child might still um, read it. I'm not saying it's not, you know, worth anything it's just not what i thought it was this one has a lot of wear to it um and it's a little like i don't know i mean you can tell it's it's a second hand book which again it's fine but this one was 359 so maybe a child will like this one i just was expecting something different and i don't know anything about it but i have it in my possession now um another one that i messed up on really badly i didn't realize board book meant teeny tiny board books so i am now the owner of this this is what a normal picture book looks like this is the size that this one is so definitely not what i thought this one was um i mean it's still readable but not really what i thought it was um the book is pancakes pancakes by eric carl if i didn't if you can't tell um, it says mini edition, and I don't know if that's what it said on the um, the website or if it did say that, and I just overlooked that. But this one was two thirty nine. I'm excited to add this one to my collection, but then once I got it, I realized I have already had this one. I have it in my classroom library. I don't know why I didn't realize that when I um bought it or when i looked at it online but i wanted it for a fractured fairy tale because when we talk about fairy tales i like to pull in all the different variations from around the world or you know fractured fairy tales where it's sort of a retelling but it's kind of different this one is little red riding hood a newfangled prairie tale but once i opened it up i realized that i already had that so i mean i, I could always use some more copies of it. I just necessarily wouldn't have bought it if I had realized I already have it. So I am excited about it though, in a way. It was $2.39. It's supposed to be damaged. There's a little wear and tear on the corner, but perfectly fine. And then the last one is a Fanny in the Kitchen. They wrote this one down twice on the packing slip, but they, so I wonder if they charged me twice because I only have one copy of it. Um, anyways, it's Fanny in the Kitchen. This one, I think it's a true story. Oh, it's how Fanny Farmer invented recipes with precise measurements. It's, um, I don't know, it's nonfiction on something. I don't exactly remember who Fanny was or what she did. I think she invented like kitchen measurements maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'll have to do some research. But this one I'm really excited about. Um, It'll be good for a read aloud. It's not overly lengthy. And it does, I think it's literary nonfiction. I think that's why I bought this one. But I don't know. I'd have to um, read the whole entire story. But I'm excited about this. It was, did I tell you all that? 321. Um, it's supposed to be a scratch and dent, but I don't see anything that is wrong with it. So I'm excited to add this one to the collection too. Okay, so that was my mini book haul. So excited about these books. I know I say that a lot. I'm trying to catch myself because I say so super excited so many times, but I really am. I am just so anxious to 
Did you see what I did there? I'm so anxious to get these into the classroom. Maybe not this little one, but um, I think the kids are really going to love this. And I can't wait, especially for these. I am thinking about doing a book raffle with these new graphic novels. Um, I'll insert a picture here of last year's book raffle. Of course, we haven't done one this year, but um, these are really neat to do um, when you have a lot of new books that everyone's fighting over. Um, it's real simple. I'm sure I do mine just like everybody else. I don't know where the idea originated unless it started with um, Donna Lynn Miller in uh, the book Whisper, and that might be where this whole idea came from. But basically, you take however many books, just like I have in the picture, um, you put them on a table, you put a little cup in front of them, and you let the kids, whatever they want to enter to win the book, they write their name down in a slip of paper, and you draw um, a name out of the cup for that book, and whoever's name you draw, they get to read that book first. They don't get to keep the book. They don't get to win the book. They just get to read the book first. So. I think I'm thinking about doing that normally when I get a scholastic book order in and um, there's a bunch of new books that the kids are excited about they always want to put the book that they're reading down and get a new one and I understand that I do try and prevent that or you know try to you know suggest that they wait because I don't want them to just abandon a book that they're liking but um, a book raffle is a great way to generate excitement about a book and you know give everyone a fair shot reading that book so I might do um, a book raffle with those new books I have just placed um, or I'm not I haven't I'm gonna place the book order tomorrow a huge I had state money that I did not use last year and I get to I need to spend it by next Friday so I have let the kids do wish lists I'll insert a picture of that here the kids did scholastic wish lists today so we looked at scholastic book orders and they wrote down all of the books that they were interested in and I have taken their wish list and I have gone through scholastic and I have um, entered books into my cart or put books into my cart and I'm going to order a huge amount of books from Scholastic because I want to personalize the library for them. I like to do this. I did this two years ago, I think, when I had a lot of money that I needed to spend. Um, and I, had, I was already set with like copies and everything, so I used it for Scholastic. Um, and I was really excited. I was worried that I was just spending my money on books and that I really shouldn't do that. But now I don't see a better way to use your money than to... Um, order books and I wanted to wait until I got this year's group so that I could kind of see you know what kind of readers I have and I want them to you know hold some ownership to our classroom library and I want them to feel like it is their library and that I filled it with books for them and tailored to their reading interest and um, and um, you know I want it to be something that they can be proud of and that they can you know love and want to go and visit and has books that they're excited about so I have ordered or I'm going to order books I've started on the order form today but I'll finish it up tomorrow I cannot wait to get those new books in um, I overheard a little boy talking about how he loved when this classic book box came today um, and he just loved when the high school uh, office aide delivered a box. So I'm so excited about that. I, um, I'm excited about the ones that I have picked. I'll show y'all when it comes in. I'll show you everything that I ordered because I ordered a lot of series. Um, I ordered um, a lot of uh, dog man, just a lot of books that they're excited about and I'm excited about. So that's coming up. I know the kids are anxious about that. I'm anxious about that. And I will um, share it with you guys too. And while we're on the subject of books, I got a book that I am personally excited about reading. It came today. It is on my doorstep. I couldn't pick it up when I came in because my arms were full of stuff that I brought from school. So let me go and grab it real quick and I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to read because I started a book last night, but I'm only on, I think, page three. So I'm going to stop reading it for a second and I'm going to read this one because oh, when I show you guys, if, you, if, you, if you're a reader like me, you're going to know what book I um, am talking about immediately because it was released yesterday or our last actually I think it was released last week so I have <laughs> I have showed major patience in, in not getting this one but um, I ordered it Friday and it came today so excited about this one cannot wait to read it let me show you guys let me go and grab it real quick in this pretty Amazon packaging let's open it up and see what it is 
It is Renee Carlino's Blonde Kiss. This is another new adult romance top book that I am so excited about. And I don't really know why I'm so excited about because I have disliked more Renee Carlino books than I've liked. But when I like a Renee Carlino book, I just absolutely love it and I can't put it down. So <laughs> I'm hoping that it's going to be one that I absolutely love, not one that I absolutely hate. So I, I'm going in with high hopes, but it may not be the best. So it's okay. The cover's really pretty and I love the turquoise and I love the turquoise here. So we're off to a good start, right? Hey y'all, it is Wednesday afternoon. I blanked for a minute and I almost said Tuesday, but no, it's Wednesday afternoon. Oh my goodness, this is the second week of the kids being back, but it's kind of going by fast. What's up with that? Monday was a really busy day, but then yesterday I just got to come home and be at home and work around the house, but not have to go anywhere, which is the first time since, oh, oh goodness, what, didn't realize the um, satellite radio just kicked in. It must have like had to acquire a signal. Um, so sorry for the big, huge outburst of music. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Um, I don't think I've had a day until yesterday where I've just come home and not had to go anywhere. So that was, <laughs> very nice and I think that has made the week go by um, in a quick way I guess um, today was really good yesterday was good today was really good kind of had like a normal schedule where we didn't have to shorten the day any um, and that just made a world of difference because we've had to do that so um, much even in the second week of school and you really can't get into a routine so um, I'm very thankful <laughs> For the last two days they have made me feel much better about you know being able to get things accomplished um, I don't know it's just it's a really good day all the there's a nice breeze in the air it's 82 degrees but it doesn't really feel like that outside it kind of has just just the slightest hint of a fall feel it's still burning up but but it feel it, like you can you can just sense that it's about to be fall or it will be in a little while anyways so if um, the brick guy would call me about um, setting up an appointment to look for brick for the foundation for my house, it would be the best day. He still has not called. I'm hoping the contractor will start laying the foundation this week, but um, nothing's happened so far. So still holding out hope, still crossing fingers, but nothing yet. Um, anyways, I wanted to pop on real quick. I've got to, um, I'm going to have a dinner with my grandparents tonight. Um, my hair is not doing the best. It's like flat by the end of the day. Um, I'm about to yank it up into a ponytail, but I'm having dinner with my grandparents. Um, they had doctor's appointments all day today. So, um, I know my grandmother doesn't feel like cooking. So my mom and I are going to carry supper up there tonight and we're going to eat with them. And then I need to run to Ulta for hair spray but I don't really want to go but I know I need to I also need to go to the grocery store and I really don't want to go for that either um, I'm reading oh I meant to show y'all but it's in um, it's in my house I'm reading Renee Carlino's books did I did, our book did I talk about that yesterday I think I did I'm pretty sure I did I am on like the fifth chapter oh my goodness you guys it is so good it's called blind kiss oh my goodness I'm loving it I'm still in the flashback part um, from 14 years from where our story is taking place and I'm loving it I'm really nervous about where it's gonna go because it's gonna be really heartbreaking if it doesn't go where I want it to go and oh, I just I cannot put it down that's why I don't want to go and get hairspray or go to the grocery store tonight. I just want to come home after my grandparents and read um, and I also need to get some work done too but Oh, I just want to read. I just want to sit on the back porch and read my book, but sadly I cannot do that It'll be okay though. Um but I do need to get going. I called the food in um, about 15 minutes ago and it's probably ready at this point and it's going to get cold if I don't get there and pick it up. So I will check in with you guys later on. Uh, if not tonight, then tomorrow. Sorry for no school post or anything. We did have a really, really good productive day. We did, um, we finished up our Google presentations and we started Freer models for our uh, vocabulary journals. And I'm really happy with how we uh, did all that and I'm hoping to sit down and explain it and show pictures um, maybe even go out to the classroom and film so that I can show you the board that we're working on making with our vocabulary sentences so hopefully that is gonna come later on in this week's vlog so stay tuned I guess I will uh, chat with you guys later on today or tomorrow or whenever 
Hey y'all, it is Thursday afternoon. I am on my back porch, as you can see. Um, I've just gotten home, exhausting day. It was really good, but it was an exhausting day. Thursdays are so tiring, aren't they? Um, the week has flown by. I think I mentioned that yesterday. I don't really have anything going on this afternoon. I'm hoping that I can just stay here and get a little bit of work done and share it with you guys and um, also read because I know I talked about this yesterday but I am currently in the middle of Blind Kiss by Renee Carlino. I am currently on page 98. Oh my goodness you guys this is so good. I just want to sit down and read it the rest of the afternoon. Um, and there's like a slot and when I say slot I am talking teeny tiny slot um, hint of a breeze which makes it feel like fall I mean it's still like probably 86 degrees and it's still burning up but there's just I don't know my imagination I'm sure but oh, it just kind of feels like fall so I just wanted to sit on the back porch and read my book I'm gonna try and sneak in a little bit of work though I am not gonna go anywhere I don't have anything to do this um, afternoon so I'm hoping to just enjoy the afternoon and sneak in a little bit of work um I'll share my work with you guys I am working on my vocabulary journals um, but there's some other things that I need to do I should have made a to-do list oh what was it y'all it is Saturday afternoon I'm about to head up to my classroom to do a couple of things in preparation for next week normally I do not go up to school on the weekends I, um, I just kind of do everything here but there's a couple of things that I do need to get prepared in my classroom so I've got to go up there and do that and then I've got to go over and stake out where I want the house um, on the land so that they can start digging the foundation this week. So I'm super excited. <laughs> Got a lot to do. I'm going to start moving my um, bedroom suit, my bed and my dresser and chest of drawers um, tomorrow to my mom's house. She's, we're, there's a lot going on right now, but um, I'm about to follow her up to um, get the truck so we can bring it back so that we're going to be ready to go in the morning and hopefully get a ton done tomorrow so that everything will be set and I can start clearing this house out. So, so I'm going to bring you up to the classroom with me and kind of explain what we did this week with a couple of things um, and show you what I'm going to do next week and so come with me and let's get some work done. Okay, so we are in my classroom Saturday afternoon. Um, I'm gonna try and get some stuff done. Like I said just a second ago as I was on my way up here, I um, need to switch these out, which normally I do this on Monday, but I had to be up here anyways. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this, and I thought I would chat with you guys about how last week's read alouds went, and then show you what this week's read alouds are going to be, because a lot of you guys are asking me that on Instagram. Um, and I try to show it every day, but I thought I would just kind of give you a little preview in case you wanted to see beforehand. So let's talk about last week's read alouds and how they went over, and then I'll show you um, what I'm planning on for next week, which it always changes. Sometimes I change it up, and sometimes I get inspired by something new, or <laughs> we want to read something new, or I find a better fit for whatever the lesson is. But this is my tentative schedule for next week. But first, let's talk about this week's. So this week we read Rot on Monday. It came in the mail by Ben Clanton on Tuesday. That was by Ben Clanton too. Um, love Ben Clanton. He is just amazing. Love him. His stories are so fun and the illustrations are just perfect. Um, Wednesday we read Can I Be Your Dog? Thursday we read The Fractured Fairy Tale by Mo Willems, um, Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. And then Friday we were going to read Alma but I am working on something for this one, like a little mini lesson with um, your names. So I never finished getting that ready. So I temporarily put Alma on hold and we read, um, I will never not ever eat a tomato. This one doesn't have a jacket, so I didn't display it up here for very long because it fell down constantly. When uh, that happens, when a book that I'm reading doesn't have a dust jacket, I just print off the cover. So um, this was a last minute switch, so I didn't do that, but normally that's what I do. Oh, phone's ringing, hang on. 
Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, so that's what we read last week. Um, as you can see right here, we charted the first week's stories. Let me show you that. We read Strictly No Elephants, My Teacher is a Monster, We Don't Eat Our Classmates, and then All Are Welcome. And I did this little chart thing. I like how I did this. I hate the colors. They don't go with anything else, but I hated to redo it. Um, other than the colors that I chose, I do like how I charted it and we could see how um, how everybody voted and what everybody thought. So I'm going to do that again. Um, everybody wrote post-its talking about their favorites and I just pulled several and stuck on the board to um, kind of even it out. And I like that, but the way that we voted, I didn't like. I just had for the first week. I just had them uh, write it on a sticky note and that took too long for me to total up. So, um, one of my good friends on Instagram, Lady Bud Teaching, she um, mentioned a Google form and I just thought that was genius. So I did that this week. Let me show you, let me see if I can pull it up on um, my like, little teacher Chromebook and see if I um, can show you because that worked so well. Let me pull that up. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what the Google form looks like. If you've never used Google forms, they are phenomenal for um, for everything from voting, for um, little quizzes. The results are compiled so well, they're easy to read, um, easy to check, it creates a little spreadsheet or you can see each individual response. I cannot say enough good things. I love Google Forms and I cannot believe I didn't think about using these to vote. Such a great idea. So let me show you what my quick little ballot looked like. I whipped this up in like five minutes right before we voted in my second class. I didn't do it with the first, I forgot about it. Um, but I did it in the second class and it worked so great. So let me show you what it looks like and how easy the results are to see. Okay, so here is what the form looks like. This is what the kids saw when I posted it into Google Classroom. So let me see if I can zoom you guys in. I'm having trouble um, getting the camera and the tripod. Let me fix that. Okay, so the... Um, there's only two parts to it. It said which book earned your vote as favorite picture book of the week and then we had all of them listed and then the second part said explain your choice. Why did you enjoy the picture book you picked? So that's what it looks like on the kids end and then if you go up here to responses it charts it for you so that you can see what everybody chose. As you can see the leading vote, the one that won the most votes was Rot followed by can I be your dog? Um, I just love how easy it is, how it color codes it, and then it shows you all of the kids' um, responses, and so those are easily read too. So I was just so pleased with how easy that was. Such a great idea. So I'm going to take down the book covers from last week, and I'm going to fill the books the book jackets with the ones that we're going to read this week. I do like to wait, or I did last week, and I liked how, how it worked out. I don't want to put this up before the kids are here and they're seeing me do it. I think it makes it more interactive and they're, um, they feel more part of it if I do it with them and like explain what it is and we can see it. So I'm not going to do that now and just have it for them up when they come. We're going to do it all together when we're back at the rug. So I'm going to hold off on that. So that's why that's still blank. But let's figure out what we're going to read next week. So we're working through our genre notebook. And we've done a whole lot of fantasy. The kids are noticing that the majority of last week's book were fantasy. Um, we did do a fairy tale. And we did a realistic fiction. But the majority that we have read have been fantasy. And I want to kind of broaden our book selection. And I found a great one um, at Barnes & Noble this morning that I'm super excited about. Let me show you what it is. Story of John Newberry and the Boisterous Birth of Children's Books. This is a fabulous literary nonfiction. And that is a genre that my kids are struggling with. Um, we have a genre quiz on um, Tuesday and that one and expository text is the ones that um, they're not understanding. They're not um, really comprehending. So I thought that it would help to see some examples. So I got this one and I love it. It's short enough to like be an interactive and engaging read aloud, 
but it offers a lot of um, great info and in a story form. So I'm excited to um, show this one to them and I'm hoping that it helps them with the genre a little bit. So this is what we're going to read on Monday. So I'm going to take the jacket off and put it on Monday, which is a little hard to do with one hand. Um, but I'm going to put the dust jacket on Mondays so that we'll at least we'll have that one ready to go. And then let's find some for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So we're also starting our meeting board this coming week. So I like to incorporate character traits into the read aloud because I think that um, helps them retain the um, vocabulary and understand the meaning of it a little bit more. So I'm going to find some words that we're going to use for character traits next week and I'm going to find picture books that have characters that show those traits. So let's figure all of that out. I did this last year and one of the first um, uh, character traits that we did was imaginative and determined and we read a picture book and I'm trying to find it it showed that um, trait really well and the kids really um, understood like how to make a character statement and cite it with evidence from all of that that very first week and I loved how that worked out so I'm gonna try and do that let me see if I can find that book <laughs> that I was trying to find I can't find so I'm just going to save that character trait for the next week and I want to spend this week looking for that one because while I was looking for that one I came across a lot that um, would be good for what we're doing this week and that make really good read alouds so let me show you those and um, show you why I picked those I've put you guys at this angle so that I can have both hands to talk with y'all um, the first one that I know I'm going to read this week is Henry's Freedom Box because we talked about this one a lot when we did literary nonfiction. Um, this one was the example that I used and they were aware of it too. I think they read it in third grade. But um, this shows that it's a true story but it's written in story form. That's what they're not understanding. So I think this will be a good way to grasp the um, meaning of that genre. So that one's gonna be Tuesday's Read Aloud. Then our vocabulary that we have this week um, two of the words I know are in these two read alouds because um, I picked them from last year. So we're going to definitely read the two, um, The Case of the Stinky Stench and Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. This is the first one. This is the sequel. Um, these are great when you teach rhyme scheme, but they have, I mean, they're like, I don't know, they're, it's like an immature, um, concept but the vocabulary in these two books are fabulous so um, I'm gonna pull these so that that takes up all the days except Friday so I've also pulled Legend of Rock Paper Scissors which was a favorite last year and then How Martha Saved Her Parents from Green Beans which oh and I also pulled Interrupting Chicken which is one that I got this summer that I'm really excited to share and if I built a car, which I'm really excited to share, um, it won a read aloud award and I think it's gonna be really good. So I don't know which one to read to the kids. I think I'm gonna go with, oh, I don't know. I think I'll do because I did read this one last year and I know a little bit about how the kids responded to it last year and I'll do some little, a little bit more research on these two. I think that I'll do this one for Friday and then hold off on all of these plus the one that I was trying to find but I couldn't. I'll wait and do these the next week. So we have on Tuesday, I think I'll do another example of literary nonfiction. So we've got Henry's Freedom Box on Tuesday and then to get in some vocabulary practice, I'm going to do Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast on Wednesday 
and then the case of the stinky stench on Thursday and then at the very last day of that week I'm going to do the Legend of Rock paper, Rock paper Scissors from Adam Rex if it'll focus in. So the only other thing that I wanted to show you guys really quick and I need to go because the sun is going down and I'm losing daylight and I still got to do that thing up at the land. I wanted to show you vocabulary really quick. Um, we did Freyer models. Let me show you that. Let me grab a copy. We did Freyer models last week. I'll show you what they look like, which I'm sure you guys know what a Freyer model is. But um, this is a Freyer model. We're working on completing these for all of the vocabulary words. So the kids did the definitions on their own. We looked up synonyms and anonyms with um, thesaurus.com, which is a great website. But then for sentences, we did those together in groups and we charted them on the pocket chart. So let me show you what that looked like. Um, again, we did it with groups. We haven't talked about how to make our sentences more detailed yet. So that's why a lot of them are very, very short and um, there aren't a lot of details. We did get better as we went on, but some of them um, still are lacking. So we're going to pick that up next week and we're going to add to it. But for the first week, I thought they did really good. We talked about any misconceptions about the words. We talked about incorrect use of the words. Um, and I don't know, I just really liked how this worked for the first week and how um, they worked with a group and we kind of practiced, you know, how to work with a group and how to be respectful and, you know, accountable talk. So I was really pleased with how this went. Um, that sticky note just would not stay. And it's still not staying. I'll try and share more with y'all about vocabulary as we get into it. But, I mean, everything, everything's so new. We're just kind of taking it step by step and baby steps. So as we get more into it, though, I will definitely show you guys how, um, how we're adding to it and, and making the lessons more in-depth. Right now it's just very basic, very intro. So that's going to be it for this week's vlog. I will talk to you guys later on next week. Next week's going to be very, very busy with moving, but I'm going to try and bring you guys to the classroom a little bit more after school and chat with you guys about um, what we did that day and what we're doing in the classroom so that it's not just all stuff with me talking at my house. So fingers crossed that next week's vlog is a little bit more teacher related. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, anyways. But I will talk to you guys next week. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more teacher-related videos. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.